everybody welcome to my channel this is life with lisa you know i'm lisa pull up a chair grab a cup of coffee and let's get ready to make chicken condom bleu it's just a chicken cutlet it's your ham swiss cheese dipped in and you put in breadcrumbs you either fry it or you could bake it but let's get going it's a really yummy delicious recipe and very kid friendly and even though it has swiss cheese in it kids do like it so guys here we go um this is for the chicken condom bleu let me first show you the chicken Okay, the chicken right here, I did not pound this. This is not your traditional super thick cutlet, and this is not like your scallopini, the thin sliced either. This is kind of in between. Um, you should pound this out, okay, just to make it a little bit wider, because this is going to be really tight um, rolling it, okay? So you should pound it. I did not pound mine. So I'm going to season this with salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic powder. I'll show you one. But our, dredge, but our dredging station is flour, eggs, and um, plain breadcrumbs. The flour, I'm going to put, some, well, let's do the flour real quick. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, salt. I, I season every layer. Salt, salt, and definitely salt in here. Okay, this is where the flavor is. Black pepper. And I'm going to talk to you about the ingredients in a second. So pepper, again, according to your taste, if you want less salt, please, by all means, use definitely less salt. If you're cooking for kids and you think right now this is a little too much black pepper, cut back a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to think if that was a little too much black pepper for me. Um, let me just say this real quick. The traditional, no, I don't want no more on there. I was just talking to Ken real quick. Um, uh, the traditional recipe is just like, flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs, okay, with salt and pepper. You don't put seasonings normally in them. You could do whatever you want. You want to put onion powder in, put onion powder in. You want garlic powder, you want Italian seasoning, make it your own, but this is basically what it is. For the breadcrumbs, you could take white bread or a nice crusty Italian bread, put it in your food processor or your mini chopper, um, and use that as breadcrumbs. If you're going to go that route, add a little flour to that mixture. So if you're going to use fresh bread, definitely add some flour to that mixture. Okay, this is just store-bought breadcrumbs, so I don't have to. Um, and let me just say one other thing. If you wanted to keep this even lighter and healthier, you could just take your chicken and put it in the oven, season it, put it in the oven for a little bit, and then for the last maybe 5-10 minutes, you can lay a slice of um, ham on there with your cheese and finish, you know, till it melts and gets nice and warm and gooey and melty. You could do that too. I've done it that way. There's so many different ways you could do it. But what we're going to do today is your traditional way. Um, and normally, no. Locatelli cheese, which is your Pecorino Romano. I just call it Locatelli cheese. Pecorino Romano is your brand. Does not normally get this. So you don't have to put this in. But I do. Okay. I just want just a little bit of flavor. Not much, actually. Not much at all. Okay. Um... And you know what? You could do this with turkey if you want. Let me take my toothpicks out now because this is how I'm going to secure them so I don't want to put my hands in here once I um, have my hands contaminated. Okay. So, hold on. Ken, can you do me a favor? Can you just shut that off real quick? What else? The, the salt and pepper, garlic powder. Powder. Just a little bit. And since I'm using garlic powder, I will do every layer. Okay, so that's it for the seasonings. So I'm just going to mix this by hand. Okay, just like this. And then I'm going to season that chicken. I'm just going to do one on camera. Let's beat the eggs. Oh, I want a little parsley. Hang on, guys. Just a little parsley. And this is the order you want to do. Flour, like I said, flour, eggs, your breadcrumbs. And just a little bit of parsley just a little bit and just a little bit of here already know you can put it in there too if you wanted to or like i said italian seasonings okay and now this is where i get all dirty so i'm wearing black i'm gonna get flour all over me oh this is three eggs with about a quarter of a cup which is four tablespoons of water mixed in here okay this is a heaping half a cup <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry my husband just tripped and stubbed his toe. 
Okay. Um, anyway, so this is a half a cup of flour, a heaping, heaping half a cup of flour, and this is like three quarters of a cup of um, breadcrumbs. I just hate the fact that if you run out, you have to remix it, and then I feel like the flavoring could be off. So I'm just gonna mix this around. And I'm gonna do this off camera now. Oh, let me do the chicken, and I will come back. So I'm gonna finish mixing this off camera. So I wanna do one piece of chicken for you guys. Oh, and what else do we need? I forgot to show you. You need ham. I went to Wigman's. They did not have a Virginia baked ham. Which one is this? This is Black Forest ham. Um, let me ask my husband a question. They didn't have the one on the bone? It wouldn't work? They had it. He said this is... Okay, it doesn't matter what he said. More sophisticated. With, it's um, more closer oh. to the Virginia baked ham than the other okay. one. And then just Swiss cheese. You can use baby Swiss cheese. Swiss. Um, and that's it. This is your, tri <clears throat> your, uh, your traditional flares. is ham, Swiss cheese, and that's it. So let me do... Oh, and if you wanted to, guys, you could use... A smoked ham. You could definitely use a smoked ham in here. And if you wanted to, instead of doing the slice of cheese like this, you could get like a block of cheese and make little rectangles like this, you know, like little rectangles, and put that in there. That's good too, because I've done it that way as well. So let's just season this real quick. And I do both sides a little pepper, a little salt, just a little salt. There you go. And a little bit of garlic powder. Okay, then we'll flip it just like this. And then I'll do this side as well. Salt, pepper, garlic powder. All right, guys, I will be back in a few. Okay, guys, just real quick. Here's my Swiss cheese. You can see how thin that is. Um, and here's my ham. This is thin too. And either or the guy said it would be shaved and I don't want shaved. And actually you can see my nails behind there. Um, normally you would do two slices of Swiss cheese and this is really paper thin, as thin as you could get it. Um, you could do two slices of ham and two slices of Swiss cheese. However, come on, since these cutlets are a little bit smaller, I'm only gonna do one um, slice of uh, ham and one slice of Swiss. And again, you know what, like I said, you smoked, it's fine, okay. We're going to show you probably two. I, I put one cutlet that season in here. And now I'm going to use my hands. Okay, I'm going to pat it in. Get every little nook and cranny. Shake, 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 shake it all off. Put it in here. Let me get that. Okay. And let it all drip off. And then into your seasoned breadcrumbs. Okay, and just like this. It's like when you make uh, chicken cutlets or eggplant parm or anything you need to, or like, I don't know if you guys make veal cutlets or pork cutlets. I love pork cutlets. You know what, maybe I'll do that. I love pork cutlets. But anyway, you're just gonna do this. Okay, you're gonna really pack it in there. Okay, if you're gonna flip it again, flip it again. Okay, that looks nice and we got everything. Okay, so now we're gonna shake off all the extra. And if you wanted to, guys, you could spray this right now at this point with Pam, like an like olive oil Pam spray, and you drizzle a little bit of olive oil or whatever oil you like to use, and you can bake this in the oven. And that will even be healthier than frying it. I'm gonna fry mine in a frying pan with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of, a little bit of butter. But by all means, I've done it in the oven. Absolutely, I have. So, I'm going to show you one more. I think you got the hang of it. So, let me do one more, though. Okay. So, this is what we do. Pot it in. Make sure we get everything with flour. Shake it out really good. Put it in your egg mixture. And this goes really quick. Shake it out, put it into your seasoned breadcrumbs, and season. Okay, I mean not season, excuse me. And just put it all over and press it in really firmly. And now if this was eggplant, you can't press too, too hard. You gotta press hard, but not this firm because you, you rip the eggplant. 
Okay. And hang on, let me just ask my husband a question. Okay, by this point, you just text Kenny. Um, so, okay, guys, here we go. Now, I'm going to shut the camera off, finish the other ones off camera, and then I will come back and show you how we assemble the ham and cheese. Okay, guys, I'll see you in a few minutes, Ken. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Hey, right, guys, um, so I'm going to take a cutlet. Now, listen, just so you know, I did eight cutlets. So for you, you would do two eggs with a little bit of the water, like a quarter of a cup or even do two tablespoons. Um, the flour, I use a half a heap a cup. You could use um, a heaping one fourth cup, maybe even a half a cup. Um, and for the breadcrumbs, you could get away with a half a cup. So anyway, so this is what you would do. If you wanted to, you could put mustard down on this, like a nice Dijon mustard, if you wanted to. I mean, you guys, just switch it around. You don't have to do the same boring, traditional... Um, chicken cardamom blue every single time. Okay, I'm gonna put cheese down first. Okay, if it over, if it if it, if it doesn't fit on exactly, that's fine. No biggie. You could overhang actually. I don't care. And the ham. Normally, like I said, I would be putting two slices of ham on. I don't know if I should try one. Let me do one um, the way you normally would do it. Okay, and we'll see how we go with that. How that is gonna go okay mm -hmm. okay and then another slice of Swiss cheese then start with the fat side okay and work your way to the thin side if it overflows guys that's okay tuck it in tuck it in that's fine Guys, can I tell you something? Oh my God, guys. I apologize. Guess what? Wow. I've got to tell you something. Um, hold on. My dog has to go out. Okay, hang on. Let me show you what you would do next. Let me move this one out of the way. Technically, if you wanted to, you could do your cutlets dry, meaning season them, then put your meat on and your cheese on, then put them in your flour, your egg and your breadcrumb mixture. That's what you could do. But since I like to double coat mine, I do it both. I start out this way, then I put it back into the flour and the egg mixture and the breadcrumbs. So for you at home, I don't think you're gonna do two layers. So you would take your plain chicken cutlet, prior to breading it, again, plain chicken cutlet, just with salt, pepper, garlic, pepper, if you're gonna use garlic pepper, if not just salt and pepper, no breadcrumbs, you put your ham and your cheese on, then you roll it up, you put toothpicks in to secure it, then you put it in your flour mixture, then your egg mixture, and then your um, breadcrumbs. And then you put your toothpicks in. And I already separated cheese and my ham, because obviously I'm not gonna contaminate all my stuff. Um, hold on, Ken, can you get the camera for me? Guys, you can see I'm working on a different angle today, and then I just don't wanna walk in front of the camera like, you know, um, and give you dead air. So, do you mind showing that up real quick, Ken? You don't have to do the flour mixture now. You could just do the egg mixture. So, let me get the flour out of here. Okay. Just like this. So, this is what you would be doing on your plain chicken. Okay. So, pretend this is not already breaded. Okay. This is what you do. So, you roll up your... your um, chicken Move this one here then you put it into your breadcrumbs just like so okay and if you by all means if you like extra breadcrumbs you could do it this way too get another toothpick secure it oh i just broke it don't want to choke on that one So, and just make sure when you're done cooking, if you're serving to kids, take out the toothpicks. And if I'm serving to my mom and my dad, I take the toothpicks out for them now. Hmm. Okay, so this is it, guys. 
This is what you would do, just like this. And now you could, like I said, at this stage, if you're gonna bake it, you'll put um, some cooking spray on it with a little drizzle of your oil, oil of your choice. And if not, pan fry it and a little bit of oil of your choice and butter. Okay, just like this. Okay, guys, that's it. So let me do one more for you. Move this out of the way. Again, you're going to pretend your chicken is not breaded. You're going to put down a slice of cheese. You're going to put down your ham. Another slice of cheese. You know what's really good on this? A cheese sauce, like a Swiss cheese sauce. You take a little flour, a little butter, you make a roux on top of your stove top. If you want to know how and you want to see a video, leave me a comment. But you brown it a little bit to like a nice deep golden brown, um, golden beige color, almost like a uh, light brown color. And then you add some milk, salt, pepper. And guys, anytime I make like a white gravy, I always, always add a little accent. That's a, it gives something salt cannot give. It gives it a little something, a little extra something, something, a little something special when you taste it. It's, if, if, if you make one recipe and I make the same exact recipe and I put accent in mine and you don't put accent in, this, in yours, you can taste the difference. Mine will just have that little bit of a zip, a little bit of a zing to it. Um, so accent is very important when you're making a white gravy. And then you would just, to go back to the recipe, then you would just take Swiss cheese, put it in, you know, with the, um, the, the roux you cooked and the uh, milk, then you would just go ahead and once it became thick, you would add your cheese. So guys, this is what you do. Tuck it in, use your toothpicks to secure it. You could also use twine, guys. You could also use twine doing this by all means kitchen twine okay this one and again we'll put it in pretend this is not already breaded you'll put it in your egg mixture just like so get every little corner the inside too roll it around let me get my breadcrumbs Switch it out. And just like this. So I'm gonna finish doing this one off camera and Ken's not here, so I, I apologize. I have to step away from the shot and just give you a quick little um, dead air. Okay. Add it in. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go wash my. I'm gonna go finish the rest, and then I'm gonna wash my hands, and I'll be back. Guys, look. There's deer. I think they took off. I'm sorry, I wasn't quicker. You out there. Oh my god, look beautiful. Look. It's okay, Ruffle. It's okay. Good girl. It's alright. It's a deer family. Big oh family. my god. Look, these little ones. I think I'm gonna go throw some apples out there. They eat apples. No, Ruffles. Ruffles. It's okay. I'm sorry guys. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, look. Ruffles. Guys, as I stated earlier, this is a full meal. We're gonna have spinach. When have bread, this is just the rice. Um, I'm gonna butter the rice. So, okay. And guys, you know what? You could do whatever rice you want. You could do brown rice. You could do quinoa. Um, whatever you want. You could do homemade rice. You know, like when you boil it yourself in a pressure cooker. But you know what? Life is complicated and busy enough. So if you could take a shortcut here and there, why not? Why not? Just for upcoming, so you guys know, 
I'm going to be doing a um, homemade baked. I don't do rice pudding on the stove top. I bake it. That was my grandmother's recipe. God knows where she got that from. Um, I'm going to do another chicken breast where I'm going to get a big, thick chicken breast, like the super big ones. And um, what are we going to do? We're going to make a pocket in it. And I'm going to stuff it with a little prosciutto, a little provolone, a little roasted tomatoes. I'm going to make a nice, like, um, a, like a, an Italian vinaigrette with a lot of fennel. Okay? Fennel tastes like licorice. Um, and that's going to be next. I'm going to be doing another recipe. I'm going to be posting a recipe for a shepherd's pie. I made a really quick, 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 quick um, chicken pot pie. We'll be doing that. I'll be uh, doing that. I made some cinnamon, homemade cinnamon buns. If you like cinnamon bun, you'll love these. So let me just get to this. And we're going to add some butter. And then I'm going to stir it. Already cut this. Okay. Oh, and guys, I already salted my water before I cooked the rice. Um, so I'm not going to add any salt yet. I'm going to probably add a little pepper. But I'm not going to add any salt until I taste this. I'm using salted butter. And... Whenever I make grits or macaroni, which is pasta, or rice like this, I always, always um, season the water with salt. You have to. Otherwise, you just get that surface salt. Okay. Let me taste real quick. And I'll just draw open, actually. Mmm. Perfect. Mmm. It's a little hard. I cooked it for... Two minutes short so that's fine what I'm gonna do is put the lid on and steam it if you if you undercook mashed potato uh, potatoes for mashed potatoes or potato salad or rice just put the lid on set it aside guys okay we're going to now um, start getting ready to fry the cut um, the chicken I put them in the refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes just to get cold and set up a little bit Okay, this is the olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of um, butter. Okay. Okay, it's butter burns, we know that. Okay. Okay, I'll be back. This is like a medium high heat more toward the higher side. And tonight what I'm gonna do, instead of just browning these, cooling it today, I'm gonna add a little chicken stock. Um, I don't have a bottle of white wine open, and I'm not gonna open a bottle just to put like a little splash in. So I'm just gonna use a little chicken broth and make a little bit of a sauce. You don't have to do that, and we'll make them not as crunchy. Um, so I may leave Ken's a little separate because he doesn't like when they get soggy. Okay, let me just get my sauce. Just like so. And we're going to brown on every single side and corner and tops and bottoms and you name it, we're going to brown it. I'm going to actually hire my temperature a little bit, guys. It's a pinch. So that's cut in the background. We're making a salad. And that's it. Now, I'm not going to touch these. I'm going to let them cook here and sizzle away. Um, and then when I rotate them, I'll show you what it looks like once we do it. And after this, I'll show you how I make my spinach. Um, we're just going to check it. See? Perfect. Oh, look, perfect. Okay. If I have to add a little bit more oil or a little bit more butter, I will do that. Butter burns. Um... That's why you mix it. So I'm going to turn these and start flipping it. Oh, let me do this one first. Okay. That one's not ready. Let me come back over and we'll see what this guy is doing. Okay. He's getting in there. And this is what you want. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil, I think. Okay, I'll be back. My bad, I had a phone call. 
and I forgot to lower my temperature and it was a quick phone call but I kind of burnt it but that's okay uh, some of them not all of them um, but you know what this is real life I always say keeping it real with Lisa when I either argue with my husband or something goes wrong you got to like I thought that was on the bottom that might be right there just a little too dark Let's get it off the side. So I definitely don't want it to cook there. And like right there. See that top part on the top right? Just a little bit. That's okay. And actually, you know when you burn toast, you could just scrape it off. I could do that too. Okay. So now I'm going to watch these a little bit more carefully. and not walk away from them. Okay. Let me cook this so I get this wet in there. Okay, you wanna cook every square inch, even this part like this. Okay, like that. At this point, you would make sure these are thoroughly cooked, okay? Like these are, okay? You can eat them like this. You could, if they're not thoroughly cooked, they're too thick. Stick them in the oven, finish cooking them in the oven. I'm going to, well, this one has to finish cooking. But I'm going to add some broth and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. Okay guys, now I'm gonna add um, about a fourth of a cup, no, excuse me, half a cup of chicken stock. This is low sodium, because I like to control the, um, salt for sure now if you don't want you don't have to do this stuff i'm just doing it i'm gonna make it a little saucy i'm gonna first if i had wine i would definitely add a drop of white wine but i don't it's not open at least i'm gonna throw now i drained my oil and that butter i did the one i cooked in even though that had all your flavors and had all those brown yum yums that you would scrape up but it was too dark i don't know what's going on it was too dark so I drained it and I put a little bit more olive oil and a smidgen of um, butter. I'm going to put the chicken back in here. I'm going to put a lid on it. Let me get my tongs. Okay. And you're going to think cringe because I just made these crunchy. But, okay. I'm going to do it. I'm only going to do the one side. We're not going to flip these. I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to lower it a little bit. I guess that's good. I'm going to scrape off whatever I can in here. Okay. Because I lost a lot of the flavor, but that's okay. We're going to make more flavor because it's still going to cook. I'm going to put a lid on this. Um, which I don't think I have my lid right now. So hang on. Guys, you can always add a little bit more stock, like a two tablespoons. If this, you know... Is completely evaporated before you think your chicken is done. If I wanted to, we could flip it, but I'm trying to compromise with Ken, keep some of it crunchy and whatnot. And you could always, at the end, put in a dab of butter and bring it home that way as well. But again, you don't have to do this step. This is not traditional, but you don't have to do this step at all whatsoever. You just fry them or bake them, call it a day, but this is nice. Or making, like I said, that Swiss cheese sauce is really delicious too. Guys, this is cooked. Look how nice and juicy this is. I'm not going to add any extra butter. I don't need to. You could, but juicy as heck and still crunchy for can, but yummy. Okay. This is definitely done already. Continue doing this right here. You cut your um, garlic any way you want. You can do um, you could do it this method. You can use a zester. You could use a food processor, a mini one, obviously a chopper. You can do it by hand. And I'm just gonna help it along. Okay, so I'm gonna do this off camera, and then I will be back on our next step. Guys, I put my temperature on um, medium, medium, to medium high, but more closer to the medium side. Okay. Normally, I would use another clove or two of garlic, but I'm very impatient. 
tonight. And you use as much cloves of garlic as you like for your family and your spinach. But we all love garlic here. So, you zoom out a little bit too close, I think. Okay. So, I'm just going to brown this. Uh, two minutes, maybe. I'll let you know at the end of the day. Because um, you definitely don't want to burn garlic. Because if you do, it's very bitter. And you have to dump it again. Dump it out and start again. Because if you don't, you will ruin your uh, whatever food you're cooking. There's nothing worse than burnt garlic. Ugh. Even I, who love garlic, can't eat it. Because, I mean, truly, it's very overpowering. And it's just bitter. Very bitter. So, I'm going to let this uh, get going. And I don't have my big deep frying pan with me. So, I'm going to probably take... I'm going to dump a bag and see if I get the whole bag here and then season it with just with salt and pepper. If not, I'll do half the bag, half the bag, season with salt and pepper, then the other half salt and pepper, and then with the last bag, do the same thing. I always make sure I season all my garlic, not my garlic, my spinach. I always make sure I, I season all my spinach, not just the, the top layer, but everything in between as well. Okay, this is starting to smell good. I smell garlic. So let me just see if we can get this in here. I can. So I can season this in one layer, layer. If I want, I can pick it up too. Okay, so let me get that going. You can use baby spinach, it's up to you. A little pepper, not too much. Salt, you gotta use some salt. And once this starts to steam down, let me turn it this way. I'm gonna first put the girl. I'm gonna first mix this because I don't want the garlic to burn on the bottom. So I will do this. Then I'm gonna throw the other bag of spinach right on top of this. I don't add water usually to this to help steam it. It steams down pretty nicely on its own. But if you want, you can use like a tablespoon or two tablespoons of water to help speed it along and help it steam down quicker. Okay? You can already see right in front of your eyes. It's starting to steam and um, steam down. Okay. And this is what it starts to wilt very nicely. Okay. Now let me get the other spinach in. Battery low. How is that possible? Huh. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. Guys, that's what's happening. My light's not going to come on because my battery is really low. I'm putting just more pepper and salt on this layer. It's the second bag. That's all I'm doing. A little bit more salt. You can adjust the seasonings later. Um, I'm going to put in a little lemon juice and a little bit of butter. A little squeeze of lemon juice just like this. Just a little pop of, um, you really don't taste the lemon. It's just, it's, to me personally, it makes it brighter. You don't know it's really in there. And I'm going to add just a little bit of, about a teaspoon of butter. That's it. Now I'm going to continue cooking this. Let me stir it. I'm going to put um, a lid, no well, foil on this because I don't have my lid. And finish wolfing it down. So that's it. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. Oh, I dropped a little bit on the floor. But at this point, if you wanted to, you could add a teaspoon, I mean, excuse me, a tablespoon of water or two. I do not usually. Unless I'm doing like four bags. Guys, I just wanted to say, when you cook the spinach, the doneness is up to you. Some people may say this is cooked right here. They like it just like this. Like this is perfect for if you're going to make um, a bacon salad with spinach. But I like mine really wilted, really soft. And I'm telling you, wilted, wilted. 
Okay. Look how much they cooked down. Look at that. Can you believe this was once two bags? Look at that. I think this is about done. Even for me. This is just a big piece of garlic stuff from the garlic press. I don't throw nothing away. I use it at all. There was no skin on it. It was just it didn't get pressed through the holes. Okay, that's it. Smells amazing. It truly does. If you like spinach and garlic. Okay. And I'll do broccoli rob like this too. But I'll first boil it for a little bit in the water. Um, I'll first, you know, like I said, boil it in a little bit of salt and water. Just to get some of that bitterness out. Okay. That's it. For well, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Okay, guys, let's cut into the chicken corn on blue first. Oh, look at that. Sorry, guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was like that in your face. Well, look. I wish I could put a light on for you guys. I cannot. If I could zoom in. You can see all that melted cheese right here. Yum. The ham. The chicken's right here. And that's all cheese. Um, again, if you wanted to, you could take a little of that chicken sauce that we made. The broth. The broth. Spoon it on here. You can also, um, like I said, again, like a broken record, do a Swiss cheese sauce. Yummy. Guys, here's the chicken cardon blue. I finally... Got my light to come back on. Here is what it looks like on the inside. And it's so juicy. Oh my God, it's so juicy, juicy, juicy chicken. Perfectly cooked. Okay. So that's what it looks like when it's not cut. Obviously, this is what it looks like when it is cut. And it tastes delicious with that chicken broth sauce. It really does, yummy. Guys, here's dinner tonight. Um, salad, rice, spinach. Um, back here is um, Italian bread with a little bit of butter and your chicken condor blue. That is the star of our show right there. Do I want to see ruffles? Ruffles. I make such a mess, guys, when I cook and I wear in the midst of cleaning that's the pot of rice. But ruffles, ruffles. Hi. Hello, puppy. Okay. Back to the on track. Okay, get off. My mom was beeping in. You're on. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Ken. Uh, Lisa made some uh, chicken cordon blue, rice, spinach, and I have a salad over there and some bread. I'm going to take a, the main, uh, main course. The main uh, attraction is the chicken cordon bleu. I'm going to take a bite of it right now. Mm. She gave me a piece I like crunchy outside. And the combination of the chicken, ham, and Swiss cheese is really, really delicious. And um, I'm glad she made this tonight. We haven't had it in a little while. And uh, it's one of my favorite dishes. So definitely, like everything else, please try it. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening. Bye. Guys, and here's the spinach. It truly is, I promise you, very good. It's delicious. Yum, yum. Please excuse my appearance. I'm very tired because I've had no sleep last night. I mean, I have not even gone to bed. I just want to say, if you do the chicken kind of blue, try it with the, the chicken broth. I really do think you'll like it. Here we go. I'm gonna taste that, that spinach tonight with that garlic. Mm. Mm. Delicious. You could taste that garlic. Mmm. Very good. Always is just like you don't even taste the lemon, but there's a little something something you don't know what it is. Mmm. Perfectly seasoned with that salt and pepper. And I did it in the two layers of the bag. Very good.